Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, to this uh, TWR Facebook Live. Um, so I'm very happy to be here this morning. Hope all of you are doing well. Um, so this morning uh, is a uh, is a question and answer for uh, your eternal body. Uh, so I just wanted to say maybe um, a few minutes of overview, uh, especially those who are first time listening to this Facebook Live. Uh, we are talking about you are not your pain, you are not your problem, you are not your challenges, you are not your conflict, uh, but we identify with that. When we identify with those, we get very stuck and we feel suffocated. We feel we are not breathing enough, we are not feeling enough, we are not able to see things clearly. We project through those fear, pain, and we create whole our world through those identity, through those experiences. So if you are not your pain, then who you are, this is what the next question is, and then the who you are, I was saying that you are discovering your own eternal body. You, who you are is um, basically uh, pure space and pure awareness, or you are a pure space and pure light. So what does this mean, pure space and pure light? It means in traditionally we say uh, emptiness and clear light. So emptiness is pure space, uh, clear light is pure awareness. So you are that pure space and pure awareness. So the question uh, here is truly a question here is that um, can you really feel that? Can you really feel that? So the so now maybe a specific question I would like to ask to all of you is uh, um, so, um, I would like to ask you all is this very moment how are you are identifying today? Are you how you feel today? How what are you identifying today as who you are? A perception of self. What is your perception of yourself today? Are you aware of that? What is what are the emotions, feelings you have this moment? If you are not aware of perception of self, then maybe it's easier to be aware of emotions that you are feeling this moment. And if you are not able to feel your emotion this moment, then you can see uh, what you are saying, what you are doing. Uh, maybe you see something in your conduct and your behavior. So, so we talked about this, a, a, a sense of self, I think that is very, very important here. And, and in a way that if you look at in your life, what, what are the moments, when are the moments when you really, really felt very good? When you really felt very happy? Those are the moments, not when you are doing so much or not, you not, those are the moments when you're feeling very open who you are, very open what you're feeling, very open what you're doing, very open what's happening in your actions, very open in all those areas when you're feeling that and you're very feeling very connected to all those areas, then you are very happy. When do you feel sad, when you feel kind of pain? It's when, you, when you're feeling a sense of self not open. Who you are is not open. What you're feeling is not open. What you're thinking is not open. 
what you're where, where you're looking at, you're not looking with that openness. What you're doing, you're not very open to that. And what's happening, it's limited things happening because the, uh, the what happened has something to do with how much openness there is, obviously. So, so, so these all are things what we have been talking a little bit um, last uh, couple of sessions. And so today I wanted to start with one of the questions uh, with the audience. Um, it's a, a question from Donna Elliot. So how I feel important in the world gone mad. What do I do? When uh, basically Donna is saying that when I am feeling very helpless in the world which has gone mad, probably in some sense we know what she is referring to, and so so I know and I know like uh, many of us probably feeling the similar things. It's a uh, it's that basically feeling uncertainty, uh, be shaken by all the uh, political situations, uh, shaken by uh, instability uh, going on in the country. Um, so basically, what we are feeling is uncertainty. Not probably safe, uncertain, uh, doubtful. These are the emotions that we are feeling. So it, in a way, if you look closely, I think this is a very important question probably. I think uh, among questions that I feel is very important, I would like to give a little time on this, that probably we all feel this. So let's look at how, how you are feeling this moment. Look at your feeling of uncertainty. You are feeling uncertainty because the uncertainty situations in the world, in the country. And you can also feel because those, those uncertainties are uh, coming out of a lot of uh, anger, a lot of maybe caused by fear, and then anger, then actions of anger, then these actions producing a lot of uncertainty in, in the higher level of government and people who are making decisions, people, then also people who are affected by those decisions. We are all experiencing that. So the question is, what should I do? For sure, that one thing, one thing, at least what we try, we should try to do is not to affect by those fears. Though, I say, um, sinking in that fear, uh, sinking in that anger. Because if you are feeling fearful, if you are feeling the anger, anger, rage, if you are acting out of those fear and anger, then you are not, not any different from who you are angry at. I repeat this again. If you are feeling fear and you are feeling anger and then you are acting out of those fear and anger, then you are not doing anything better. It's the same thing that you feel it's not right. You are doing exactly the same thing. But I'm not saying that anybody should not take actions, anybody any should not do something, but one should try to do as much as possible from that space, from that sacred space, from that awareness. When you're open, you see more what you can do, what better you can do, or what even sometimes cases will help you to, to be aware of what should not, what should not you do. Or what shouldn't you do? And when do you when you are more aware, may, when you feel more warmth, and you know also what to 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 know what to do, or what to do how how to do it better, or what not to do, also, because out of compassion, sometimes things are okay to leave it as it is. Trust the bigger picture that the collective intelligence, the intelligence of universe, that there is certain 
bigger things are happening, bigger changes are happening, that these changes, what we see is the smaller part of that change. And hope for the best that bigger changes is, is, is something meant to happen for greater uh, purpose. Uh, I think sometimes, personally, I feel that's how I try to see. That's how I feel it is helping. So, so that is, I think it's very important to see what do I do. So I think uh, you, what you're trying to do is uh, be aware of the fear, be aware of that uncertainty uh, as a thought, as a feeling, as an emotion. Um, so let's see, specifically I will tell what to do. Okay, be aware of the stillness in your body. Be aware of the silence in your speech. Be aware of spaciousness in your mind, but feel deep enough that stillness, silence and spaciousness. Feel deeper connection to yourself, your eternal self, not your pain. When you feel deeper connection to that openness, awareness in you, then from that openness, awareness, you look at your fear, your anger, your uncertainty, feeling of uncertainty. You accommodate, the, accommodate that, you host that, you give a spacious, luminous, warm hug to your fear, anger. And when you do that, then gradually you will feel that anger and fear is dissolving by itself. And when you see a cessation, what you feel, you feel openness, you feel awareness, you feel warmth, and that is who you are. You are not that fear, you are not that anger, but you are this openness, you are this awareness, you are this warmth. As I'm speaking, I hope you are having this a glimpse of experiences, feeling that space, feeling that awareness, feeling that warmth, union of that space awareness is the eternal body. You are that eternal body. You are indestructible. You are change less. You are, feel that certainty in that sacred space. That will help you to transcend, overcome, liberate that uncertainty that you are experiencing this moment in the world. So that is what I would recommend and uh, and of course again I don't mean, uh, I, know, I know that there are many people very activists, they, people will say, well, I don't just want you to sit in that space and awareness and warmth, I want you to do something. For sure, if whatever you feel it's right to do, it's good to do it, and go, one should go for it, but as long as you are not just coming pure fear and pure anger, and you are able to, whenever you are feeling pure anger and pure fear, when you are able to address and self-reflect and take care of through the practices, and then taking action for a much more open place, much more aware place of awareness, much more place of compassion and kindness. That is your strength, unshakable strength. And uh, they, they, that is the place where you will find much more certainty in, in doing what you're doing and what you plan to do. And that is the place you will also benefit much more with what you do, much more helpful for yourself and the society. So then uh, the, uh, another question here is the Pentec or, or, soy, or Soya, sorry, I don't, maybe not pronouncing the right uh, the name, and, but the question is, um, So, sorry, the question there, I will go down to, okay, let's say, that's fine. So that question is, um, does that empty, pure space 
which um, empty pure space. So basically, it seems like a saying, does that empty pure space exist? Uh, that the place, the place where we rest after dissolution of fear and dissolution of anger, um, where we rest in that space, does that space, empty space exist? Of course, the simple answer is yes. Um, and, and maybe the word empty space exists, uh, empty space of s pain self exists, empty space of pain fear exists, empty space of pain identity exists. Of course, that space exists in a sense, not as an empty, but empty of pain self, but the presence of full self. I think that's, uh, maybe that's important to understand. So in a word empty, it's, it seems like a kind of negative word, but when you think about empty of that pain identity, or empty of that um, pain, I say the anger, empty of that fear, and that means that that space is not empty, that space is perfected space. That Space is perfected with love, perfected with confidence, uh, perfected with hope, perfected with all ten parajana paramitas. So that empty space, not only it exists, but it is a, a space of perfection. That that is where we in the Dzogchen teachings we talk about great perfection. Dzogchen, Dzogpa Chempo means literally means great perfection or great completeness. Completeness means all the enlightened qualities are perfected there. All the prajna paramitas are perfect there, perfected there, so completed there. So, so that emptiness, it's not empty, that emptiness, not only it exists, it exists with fullness. And whenever we are aware whenever we are connecting with that emptiness or that space and I prefer to more use word as a more space in terms of the Dzogchen rather than word empty. So that space is not only open but that space is perfected with all the quality. Whenever whoever is able to connect and access that space you are accessing all your potentiality uh, that, that's where that's where we discover all our qualities. So it's very important uh, to discover those quality uh, because many times it's many times the people are able to empty things, but not necessarily people are able to uh, aware of that emptiness, or not necessarily people are able to fully uh, conscious and access that space. And when you are not able to fully conscious and access that space you are not accessing these potentiality. When you are not accessing the potentiality and not discovering the quality, you don't feel liveliness. You, feel, you don't feel energized. You feel like a dull or lost in that empty space. And when you feel dull and lost in that empty space, you fell into nihilist experience, experiences. You fell into very like a dark negative space and you don't want to fall into that dark empty space. You want to feel illuminated and perfected space. So that's, that's uh, I think, very important. And uh, the next question here is Rena uh, Simonian. Simonian, hopefully I'm pronouncing uh, right. So the question is, how do you control your fear of success? So how do you control your fear of success or how do you overcome um, overcome the fear of success? So, so the point is that it's not so important to get so attached to the success and uh, not get, uh, get too caught up with the idea of success and remaining, remaining open and being that being aware of that openness and if the success meant to manifest, it will manifest. So 
basically the the overcoming the fear of success is recognizing that fear when it is coming and uh, you know like the exercises where we have uh, as, um, repeated quite a few times how to handle that so i think mm, the practice is always the same that you uh, go deeper into the stillness, deeper into that silence, deeper into that sp spaciousness in in your body, in your speech, in your mind. Once you feel deep enough connection to yourself, and you when you when you feel deep enough openness and awareness, then through that openness and awareness, you look at the fear directly. So that's very important. Because many times we notice fear, but we don't know what to do with fear, and fear clearly knows what to do with you. It destroys you. It becomes obstacle to you. It becomes block. It becomes blockages to your success. So, so what we don't do is usually what we don't do is we are not able to see fear from right space, right awareness, and uh, if, if we're in order to overcome liberate, transcend that fear, we need to, to see from right space and from the right awareness. And when with the moment when you see from that space and from, from that awareness, you will immediately feel the shift and change in that fear. For example, you will able to sit with that fear. You will able to smile at that, smile at the fear. You will be able to laugh at the fear. You will be able to uh, have conversation, open conversation with your fear. You will be able to um, teach to your fear. You will be able to guide your fear. Or you will be able to even don't care at all. Like just kind of, it's very neutral experiences that something happens and you, it's not a big deal at all to even to engage with. And then fear instantly liberates self -liber even if we say idea of self liberation of fear liberates by itself without you doing anything only coming from uh, looking and seeing and uh, I say seeing from that view uh, processing that meditation and and liberating in that warmth and that's that's how you handle that fear and uh, it, it's, it's like a one time as I always give example that if I'm afraid of looking at something I see it's a poisonous insect or something I'm very afraid and I'm I'm getting agitated in my body I'm getting agitated in my breath I'm getting agitated in my mind I'm projecting a lot of things I'm thinking this is a poisonous insect and then I'm doing all kind, going all crazy and doing all kind of things absolutely not necessary to do. And suddenly, because I cannot see really very clearly, I don't have the clear vision, clear sights, clear view. Then I wear my glasses and then I see it's not insect, it's just a piece of rock. In that very moment, I see the truth. I, I, it, that, that seeing the truth clears my old projection and fear instantly. And that very moment, the fear is gone. That very moment, I have found the connection back to myself. So that is what is happening. So, so these are, I think, it's very important. Um, so question of this very uncertainty moment that we are really feeling um, kind of shaken by whole situation in the world right now and also uh, each individually um, feeling a little bit a uh, sense of, you know, whenever something good is begin to happen to you, you fear of them. And, and, and uh, you are, the, the, this, this saying, one is more, uh, how you say, more comfortable with the familiar hell and uh, then unfamiliar heaven. So your success, uh, your good things in your life, you might have fear because they are a little bit unfamiliar. The, the, your pain, your conditions that you have been living for a long time, you, you, beca you have too much familiarity in those situations. So even though they are not fun, 
painful, you still like to sit there, stuck there, rather than un uh, unfamiliar possibility, infinite possibility. And so, so some have a little bit more a sense of trust to yourself, a sense of trust to that um, space, sacred space, a sense of a little more trust to that inner awareness, the inner light, sense of trust to that little bit more to inner warmth. So, and with those trust, you take a little step forward to those in un unknown world, in that infinite possible world, in that beautiful, perfected, uh, uh, dynamic energy world of dynamic energy. So, so that's what I would uh, kind of recommend. And I think uh, let's start with a short meditation um, on in the same area. So I would like all of you sit more comfortably. Breathe deep five times, deep twice longer than usual, but breathe comfortably, not force, and every exhalation clear out the fear of success, clear out the uncertainty that you feel in the world, in your life, be aware of them, breathe it out, breathe it out deep, and end of exhalation, there's still some breath left over, breathe that out also, get to the bottom, and rest for a moment. So repeat this at least five times, seven times, or continue. But also be aware, as, as you continue doing that, as I'm guiding, also be aware that you are not alone. You are supported by me, you are supported by the Cyber Sangha, you are supported by your local Sanghas, you are supported by your friends. Just even that sense of feeling open to others, immediately you feel more support, more strength. Each breathing, you are breathing out the fear of success, the feeling of uncertainty, the identity of pain, current one, the ones that you are actually experiencing this moment in your life. It's not a theory, not an idea, not a story. These are real experiences in real time, in real life, this moment. So just breathe, breathe them out. Each time you feel a little bit more clearer, clearer, you, you feel a little more space, and you feel a little bit more space from that fear of success, a little bit more f f uh, space from that uncertainty, the feeling of uncertainties are going out through the breath, clearing through this awareness, clearing through this uh, power of collective practice, prayers, support, continue.
as these experience of uncertainty, fear, pain identity, it's clearing or feel opening as you feel openness. Be aware of that. Before your thoughts, your grasping minds are stuck in those fears, pain, identity, they are gone or they are going, be aware of that space now, unfamiliar space. Be alert, be awakened, be aware, connect, be conscious of that space. That openness. Indestructible space. unshakable space. Nothing can destroy this. Nothing can change this. Nothing can affect this. It's stable, grounded, centered. Being aware of this you are, you will feel that change less confidence. You will gain that confidence. You will gain that hope. You will gain and realize that kindness, warmth. So just be aware of the meditation as I'm saying that you are feeling that way. You are not that fear. You are not that pain. You are not that uncertainty. You are not that situation. You are this unbounded space. You are indestructible. You are this power. You are this light. You are this awareness. You are the compassion, the joy, the love that you are experiencing in that sacred space, in that awareness. This compassion, this kindness, this warmth are genuine manifestation of that sacred space and awareness. They are nothing more than that just pure space and pure awareness. They are nothing more than that sky and that light. But they manifest as a dynamic energy of love and compassion. And that dynamic energy has a great place in the world and that dynamic energy has a great place in your life. This compassion will talk. This compassion will act this compassion will change the world. You trust that space, power of that openness, you trust that manifestation coming out of that space and awareness, and you trust the action outcome of this compassion, love, and joy, because this is who you are. Don't forget.
and feel that I'm supporting you, we are all supporting each other, there is a greater support for you than you know. Okay, so so just some a little conclusion here is is a basically a sense of um, um, I know there are many uh, many more questions. Uh, I think uh, it's difficult to go through all the questions, and if you go through the questions, we have a little bit difficult to ha have a little more short time to practice. So I think this practice is very important for us to do together and feel supported. And I would say one thing, it's a very different to do the practice together live and, uh, and collective practice has much more power than individual practice. And particularly when the moments when we need, particularly the moments when we feel a little bit kind of uh, uncertainty, shaken, uh, weak, uh, we need that. We need, we need each other's support. And I think beauty about it is like uh, the internet age is that we, where we don't have to really go somewhere far uh, to connect. This is exactly this very moment. We are lively, we are connected with each other. And the power of this collective practice, the power of lively, a life practice like this together, it's, it's incredible. So, uh, so I, I'm very happy to, to able to do this with all of you, and of course we'll continuously do. And now maybe um, I would like to hear a little bit of comments. Um, comment, how was your experience? I know, first of all, I want to thank all, many people, like hundreds of uh, uh, the comments, uh, beautiful comments that all of you share. It, uh, I probably, I have... Uh, I might have missed one or two, probably not, but I have read through most of them, even though some of you saying few different things and four different short messages and saying few different uh, different things, but I went through all of them and uh, I it just uh, makes me happy to just see uh, people are practicing, benefiting, and feeling connection, and this is what, what why we are doing here. So, I yeah. So basically, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you. Um, what is it now? Today is Thursday, so we'll see you next Tuesday, same time, and um, and also just wanting all all of let all of you know, we we will having. Uh, this uh, like last um, uh, Sunday conversation with Kellon, the director of Three Door. Um, as many of you have probably were there, so uh, also uh, it was a beautiful interview. And uh, Kellon, who is a director, incredible individual, and uh, an amazing being, who who have out of his heart a lot of incredible work he has put into. A three door manifested so and a um, lot of things happens out of that organization benefit many people so I recommend to see the interview and particularly there is a short uh, video that we uh, we did in the school project so basically we are teaching these meditation uh, med uh, simple meditation uh, um, secular wisdom uh, form of teachings that to schools, and these are from age eight years old till sixteen years old, and kids practicing in a school uh, on a regular basis. They used to practice once a week. Now they are doing every day, and uh, so and all these kids are naturally responding to these practices. So one of the my big dream is to able to bring these teaching to the children's life in schools, in families, and I, I'm i just putting this little seed out there to all of you, and maybe uh, 
many of you are parents, many of you care about children and care about this idea, and then maybe at some point this is the seed that I'm planting in all of you, and then when seed is maturing sometime, when you have something to say, something to share, uh, you, you want to contribute, help, be part of it, I welcome all of you, and particularly those you are interested, I would recommend to watch that a short documentary film that we did uh, last Sunday. It's, uh, it's there. I think also I shared in my Facebook page, so it's there too. Um, next weekend, not this weekend, sorry, the next weekend, the weekend afterward, we have a, a conversation with, with Alejandro Chaul, a close student of mine, uh, who has been working very closely with me for a long time. And he is the director of the research uh, in Ligmecha International. He also works in MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas. He's also the board of director of the the our Ligmecha Sangha in Houston. Um, so he will be speaking about a number of different researches that. Uh, uh, and have done at MD Anderson collaboration between the Ligmecha and MD Anderson. It was done there at MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, one of the biggest uh, cancer hospitals in the world. So uh, again, uh, power of meditation and how it's affecting uh, health and well-being, and particularly people who are going through chemotherapy. It's amazing work. And it's a very inspiring work. And so what does that mean is we see so much more possible things what we can do. And these are like a kind of opening up doors. So I would recommend to look forward for a Sunday. Uh, I think I don't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday, but not this weekend, the weekend afterward. So, uh, so that's all for now. And uh, thank you very much, all my... Uh, prayers, love, best wishes, blessings to all of you, and um, see you next Tuesday. Bye now.